So good evening and welcome to the BS and Beer Show. Uh, lots of BS tonight, maybe a little beer. No, probably the other way around. Um, so tonight we are excited to talk about conspiracy theories. This is the Halloween show. This is supposed to be a bunch of nonsense and good times. So welcome. Um, I'm Emily Mottram. Again, not drinking beer. There isn't anything to even eat in my house. So water it is tonight. Uh, architect here in Maine. Uh, just wanted to say the BS and Beer Show is an independent grassroots movement. The hosts and all of our guests dedicate their time for free to bring this show to you every week. So we hope you enjoy it and say thank you to our guests afterwards. They volunteer their time to be here with us. Wait, wait we're not getting paid? Um... Where's the $10,000 promise? We're getting paid in Checks laughter in and ridiculousness and, you know, 10 minutes of actual information in an hour and 20 yeah. minutes of okay. nonsense. Uh, and we want to say thank you to uh, Green Building Advisor and Fine Home Building for being our media partner. So they make this happen on Zoom every week and they post the updated shows on our YouTube channel and on the BSM Beer Show uh, blog post on Green Building Advisor. So off to you, Ben, for general All announcements. Right. All right, here we go. Uh, so everybody can find the chat box icon at the bottom of the screen. You can post your questions and comments in there. Uh, be sure to click all panelists and attendees or everyone. Otherwise, Zoom tends to revert you to panelists only. So only we see your messages and we're generally not paying attention. So Fine Home Building sends out a Zoom reminder each week. If you want to receive those as well as other information, join our mailing list at thebsandbeershow.com or check out the weekly post at Green Building Advisor that goes up on Sunday mornings. If you have not been receiving the emails, please check your spam box. The video recordings of tonight's show will be available at the Green Building Advisor and all past shows can be found on YouTube and through a link at thebsandbeershow.com. An audio-only version of the BS and Beer Show is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, we want to mention that we've got some upcoming uh, items going on. Uh, NAHB's International Builders Show, February 8th to 10th in Orlando. Uh, the Brew Crew will be hosting a live BS and Beer Show each afternoon, and we have some stellar, stellar guests planned. So be sure to either come or tune in for that as well as the Passive House Accelerator is an excellent resource for anyone interested in zero carbon building and Passive House design and construction. It was founded by architect Michael Ingui, a friend of the show and someone who can, whose contribution to the Passive House industry we'd like to recognize. Check out their articles, podcasts, case studies, and community calendar for upcoming talks at PassiveHouseAccelerator.com. And uh, this evening, I am drinking, I don't know if we can see it, a uh, Kent Falls Brewing Super Sparkle. Lovely, juicy IPA. Artwork by a friend of mine. And on to you, Mike, for our introductions. Okay, th thank you, Ben. I'm Mike Mains in Maine. Uh, tonight, I am drinking, uh, can't see it, it's an herbal tea my wife makes called Moe's Mountain Chai. Uh, used to be available on Etsy. It's not anymore. I have a limited edition. Uh, and tonight, I am playing my a, uh, sort of 1930s gangster with a fake gun. Um, That's an Uzi, Michael. Really, is this an Uzi? Is, is is it that small? I don't think 1930. Well, I don't know, maybe, but 1930. That looks like a little oh, advanced. Well, th th this is my 19. Like I don't. Yeah, I also ha have my 12 gauge uh, shotgun here, but uh, my wife said I shouldn't show that on screen. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, Carl Seville is principal of his SK Collaborative, a consulting business based in Decatur, Georgia offering design review, training, building certification, building envelope inspections, and testing services. Michael Anschell is heavily involved in the green building movement and is the owner and principal of Odagawa Anschell Design Build LLC, a nationally recognized design build firm uh, in Minneapolis that focuses on older residential homes. Carl, I'd, I didn't uh, stop to ask what you're drinking and if you had, any, if you had anything to add to uh, that, uh, that lengthy bio. Nope, I'm drinking emergency drinking beer, which is from a from a local brewery. It's actually a very good lager. This is their regular version. They also have a peach version and a watermelon version, which is really remarkably good. Um, since I don't like IPAs, I, it's one of my favorite beers. Um, the only thing that's to add is that I'm basically I'm a recovered remodeler. I sort of had 25 years doing doing custom remodeling, and do not miss it for a second. <laughs> How about you, Michael? Uh, what are you drinking, and, and what did I, I leave out? Uh, just that I finished teaching my first semester at Boston Architectural College, which was pretty awesome and exciting. Oh, wow. And I did put Lloyd's book in our required reading material, along with Bill Rose's, which was 
a lot well, of fun. I am drinking, but not my book, right? <laughs> I I was doing commercial. Oh, okay, all right. You know, yeah. So our book, I believe I'm. A, I believe I contributed. You con- you contributed, right? Our book, <laughs> not make the reading list. Um, I'm drinking. Get me the manager. <laughs> This is an imperial stout with cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and star anise weighing in at 10.3% alcohol. Ooh, whoa. Hence, wow. the smaller glass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not surprised you, you're upright from the fumes. Yeah. <laughs> the Watch the barnish on your table. really good till the end of the show. <laughs> So, so just like, or uh, we had had such a, uh, a a a positive reaction last year to Michael and Carl doing a presentation for a Halloween special that we have them back this year to talk about spooky conspiracy theories, uh, and they have a presentation. We have no idea what it will involve, so uh, disclaimers will be uh, available elsewhere. But um, can you, um, are, are you ready to start, Michael? We're, we're, we are, we were born ready. Carl was born ready 184 years ago. I was born <laughs> ready a few less than that. Carl, aren't you turning 78? No, no, I'm actually going to turn 65 next year. My wife is already talking to me about what I have to do about Medicare. Pretty scary. Wow. <laughs> All right. So here's, here's, um, <clears throat> this evening we're going to be doing uh, something different. We're going to be doing a presentation in the style of Jeopardy meets Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And so, uh, Emily, Michael, and Ben, you are our contestants today. And no, I don't have a category a called your mother <laughs> in this, in this. Is version. there, a, is there an uh, ask an I'll audience? I'll take anal, anal bum covers for a thousand. <laughs> yeah. Phone a friend. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, are no, there are no right or wrong answers. So don't worry about it. <laughs> and. Whoever gets the most points and you are in charge of keeping score yourself will win Carl Seville's voice on your answering machine, <laughs> telling anyone who calls you to get off your My lawn. lawn. <laughs> Carl, can you give us a sample of what that would sound like? Get off my lawn. <laughs> he is the God, I hope I win. That, that's, that is a prize right there. All right. So I'm going to do my best to make Oh, I can't hold share on, my... hold on. I got to I got to dust off my abacus for this. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got to like, oh. give you permission to share. Okay, now you can share. And yes, we we do imper- encourage audience participation. In fact, I think uh, you know, if audience members score more points, then Carl, you're is there a limit to the number yeah, of people? I can do it for everybody. All right, there we go. Okay. So uh, we, we haven't uh, determined pecking order, but uh, in my screen, uh, Ben, Michael, and Emily are in that order. So um, Ben, you can pick a category. You can choose from bad ideas, myths, conspiracy, or really bad ideas. We're going to save the bonus round and the, oh, that's cute. Oh, come on. <laughs> that's where I was going. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Okay, we got to go right into conspiracy. Let's have it. Right into conspiracy. Okay. Uh, pick a category. 100, 400, 200, 500, 300, or 600. Uh, uh, let's go for 200. Thank you, Alex. Carl? This facility in Alaska claims to be used for atmospheric research, but is in fact a mind ooh, control ooh, weapon ooh, and also ooh. responsible for the Joplin tornado. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I've got my Dang. aluminum foil cat on. <laughs> yeah, harp, yes, harp, harp, harp. Yes, good job, Ben. You are right. The high frequency active auroral research program, which was designed to study atmospherical occurrences, measure distances within atmosphere, and study the aurora borealis, has been mistakenly identified as a giant mind control experiment for anyone who lives in Alaska, which is like eight people and somehow managed to create a tornado all the way down in Missouri while doing nothing to any of the states or the entire country of Canada in the process. So congratulations, Ben. 
You Thank you. I have a lot of crystal waving hippie friends that have cornered me at dark times in the middle of the night to tell me about <laughs> how I'm being brainwashed by harp. <laughs> 200 points. Uh, Michael, you're up next. All right. Do you want uh, to stick inside well, conspiracy or should we, do you want to change categories? I don't know um, what the, how the rules work in Jeopardy. I've never watched it. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Well, I, I'm looking at uh, business plan. Is that, is that an option? No, well, that, that is that is the business of taking over the world. Carl and I, also oh, I got, known as the Green I Police see. and Pinky and the Brain. I'm pink. I am uh, the Brain. He's Pinky. Obviously, you, got you had it right okay. the first time. You're Pinky. <laughs> Who puts the later hose in on the midget? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's uh, yeah, let's stick with conspiracy theories and whatever whatever the next one up is. Oh, 300. 300. All right, for 300 points, Carl. Born out of Bill Gates' desire to know what everyone is doing, a pandemic was faked, was faked in order to introduce this item into the bodies of unsuspecting sheeple. What, what are tracking devices? Ooh. Hmm. No. 5G. Huh? 5G. No. Mm. Your chips. I, I I I was told it was tracking devices. I, I don't I don't know. I, I think we'll give it to Michael. Tracking yeah. devices in the form of microchips. Oh, microchips! Got it. Commonly right. held belief amongst those on the far right and QAnon nut jobs is that we are being injected with microchips, which of course right. are too large to fit through the needles. But you know, science be damned. Right. And, and also and we, assumes and that all somebody care. cares <laughs> enough to know about them. Yeah. Right. For, for, or, and we all carry around <laughs> tracking devices every day. Right. So it's, yeah, uh, exactly, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Michael, yes. why, don't you back, why don't you back up to the big screen so Emily, Emily has a little more. To I was going to say, I want to change the category to yeah. really bad ideas. Really bad ideas. All right. Really bad. Right. Let's go from bad. Let's go straight to really bad. And I think technically, if you got the answer right, you control the board. But I like this round robin approach. So, Emily, really bad ideas. Time to squirm for 750. Oh, you're going there. Oh, oh. The top. She's oh boy. It. All right. This tiny handed orange cock wobble fuck <laughs> muppet for president. <laughs> <laughs> who is uh who is Trump? <laughs> yeah, that was, pre that was pretty right. easy. Oh geez. <laughs> for 750, this is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Ben, back to you. All right, so, so let me see the board again here. Oh, uh, uh, we'll go just to bad ideas, please, Alex. This is actually probably the most BS related part of it. <laughs> so I'm going to go, uh, let's see, I have 200, so I need to, let's go 500. Whew. All right, 500. Dance this, party, Carl. This trendy East Coast phenomenon involves placing one outdoor feature over flat roofs that frequently leads to building integrity failure. Oh, oh, a deck. <laughs> exactly. And this is a picture of one of the many condominiums around the corner from my house that sell for these, these townhouses probably sell for 800 to a million dollars. And every one of them goes under reconstruction because all the rooftop decks fail all the time. What's better than uh, preserving your deck than walking on it or your roof than walking on it constantly? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know they can be built right, but they they just aren't around here. It's just it's just crazy. Nicely done. Everyone's a winner so far. <clears throat> Michael, we're back to you. Okay, uh, I'll do bad ideas for two hundred. Aiming low, I like it. Yes, that's my that's my mo. Carl, this small cult believes in constructing homes so tight. If you fart, they will explode. What what is uh, what is passive house? Oh, you nailed it. All right. I was going to say, does it count if he already got uh, asked about this in the chat? It's like a cheater question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Passive House, that uh, deranged program that came to us out of Germany, determined to build houses so tight, if you fart, they will explode. You All right, Emily, we're on to you. <laughs> All right, I'll stay in bad ideas, but I like the high numbers. What, what, what it doesn't say which ones are out. So six hundred. Let's go for it. Yeah, I didn't. I'm not that Oof. sophisticated. I haven't figured out how to make a prezi do that. I did think about having an entire category called things that start with the letter P, where all of the answers would be passive house. <laughs> <laughs> 
After failing to get rich with his energy musings, Martin invested in this ridiculous product. Oh man, here's where I don't know my Martin knowledge. We Phone talked about friend, this. We Cat talked Lock. about it last year. Insulating our, paint. No, no, it was our it was our first the first thing we talked about last year. Oh. DoTerra oils. What is say say again, Ben? I said DoTerra oils. No, oh. Carl, didn't he write an article praising Martin? This? Actually, praised Shit. this product, and yeah. I oh. trashed it like the same week. <laughs> it was I, a beautiful, beautiful moment in GBA where there was conflict. Foil yeah. face bubble wrap. No, that's 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 a good guess, but but no. I'm I'm working off Allison in the chat box. I'm yes. totally cheating. <laughs> oh, come on. Scrimshaw, I'd have to give those points to Allison. You can do better. Yeah, yeah. What else do you have, Allison? We don't know. <laughs> All right. I think we I think we have radiant to, we barriers. Have to, we have to show them the answer because this one they're not gonna get this one. Radiant paint. Radiant pair, barrier no. paint. Was it that? Bifoil foil is not it. Oh. Insulating paint is not it. They're both hated by Carl and I. And Martin as well. Yeah. <laughs> this this might be worse just because it's just it defies everything we everything we hold dear about basic building assemblies. Carl Dense Pack Granola. The doorbell. Oh, I remember this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was a, it, it, we, I think Martin and I both saw it at the same show. And he praised it, and I torched it like the same week. <laughs> you know, Carl, I actually looked up because I needed the image, and I went and found the article that you originally wrote where you quoted me, and you had so much redacted because the, the language I was using was so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. We, should we start Excellent. with the reverse flashing? Yeah. This yeah. Let's not even get started. <laughs> <laughs> and it's but it's so attractive is the other thing it's, it's lovely <laughs> lovely it looks like an attachment for a bad boat <laughs> <laughs> all right so you guys are tracking your points you've been writing them down because we're at have... thirty-seven thousand. yeah right so <laughs> wait this is not a pinball game <laughs> <laughs> all right uh i believe uh ben are we back to you yeah back to me Oh, that's cute. No, you can't no, go no, to... No, oh, that's, 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 ah, that's, you, that's you, later. That's, harsh that's, in that's my mouth. the end. Yeah. All right, just to myths. Just to myths. Just to myths. We haven't explored myths yet, so here we are. Myths. Who farted? Uh, pick your pick your level. Uh, I'll take who farted for 400. Who farted for 400? Ouch, Carl. What so-called crisis from the 70s spurred an obsessive environmental movement that has done more harm than good to our housing stock. Mm, Iran oil embargoes. Ooh, I don't that's, know. That's pretty. Uh, I don't know. That's pretty, pretty much close. it. That's, yeah, that's pretty Ooh. much it. Yeah. Can Can you rename that for us, Ben? Rename it. The yeah. energy crisis. I mean, we don't understand the cause, but let's call it what everyone calls it. What does everyone call it? I, I, I'm I'm missing the zeitgeist. Good vocabulary word. That is a good one. <laughs> yeah, oil embargo. I said oil embargo, right? The yeah. energy crisis. It's yeah. close enough. I think we'll give it to you, Ben. You got it. So now I'm at 38,000. 38,000. <laughs> of course, we all know because we're good studies of students of physics that you cannot run out of energy. Energy doesn't go anywhere. It just changes form. All right, Michael, we're back to you. All right, let's stick with who farted uh, for uh, 200. I like, I like aiming well. <laughs> Carl? I'm a myth about the need for inanimate objects to perform the act of respiration. Oh, this is a good one. Allison, you want to help me out? <laughs> I feel like Allison is the <laughs> ringer. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Him and Lloyd are feeding us in the chat box. <laughs> no, Allison, you're wrong. <laughs> no, what is does a house have to breathe? Yes! <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh. ding, 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 ding. ding, What happened? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Emily, you're up. All right. I'll, I'll stick with myths for 100. Let's go with a low number. Although, Carl. Arrogant humans often think this spherical, spherical object is in need of saving. 
the earth. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> the crux of the green building movement of Fort, of course, is that humans need saving, not the earth. The earth right. and, doesn't yeah, and, give and it. And my, my line is always that when the earth scrapes the boil of humanity off its ass, it will be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> my, and, and, my, so, my, Michael, I'm, I'm curious, is this, is this basically, are you just repurposing what you use for your BAC class for us? Is this, is this, <laughs> <laughs> this was the BAC class. Why spend $10,000 to take my class and get a degree when you could just tune into the BS and Beer show? True story. True story. True story. And in fact, Carl knows that my philosophy on the whole energy thing is mine the earth, suck it dry, you know, suck the core, all the energy out of the core, spread the energy around the world, you know, end poverty and sickness as we know it. And uh, the sun's going to destroy the earth anyway. So, you know, let's, let's consume it and move on to the next one. It's a popular position amongst environmentalists. <laughs> mm -hmm. Put your back up to the big picture, Michael. <laughs> also pretty presumptuous to assume that humans are worth saving. So there's always yeah, a very good point. Too. Though. <laughs> Definitely not worth saving. I would agree. <laughs> Tardy grades, however, Super cool, right? Yeah. Oh, you can't get rid of them. You can't They'll kill them yeah. forever. Yeah, <laughs> they're like they're, they're actually they're like roaches, pretty much, or worse, more resistant to roaches. Space, space yeah, roaches. that can like incubate for thousands of years and then come back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so is it me? Back to Ben. All right, let's go to uh, really bad ideas. Uh, uh, which one let's go for fifty. Really bad ideas for fifty. This is going to be a hard one. Since you don't count, it'll be worth 5000 right? <laughs> yes, exactly. this dynamic duo as guests on the B BS and Beer Show. Oh, Christoph Irwin and Allison Bales. <laughs> you are wrong. You've got to be kidding. Who wants to uh, steal? Uh, Michael, Emily, do you I want to steal? I want to steal. Emily. Angela and Seville. Yes. Angela and <laughs> This is rigged. This, uh, th that, that was from ACI several years ago. <laughs> By the way, I want to uh, just draw attention to the fact that while Carl is trying to choke me out, I am holding a beer <laughs> successfully upright. <laughs> Save the beer. All right, Michael, we're uh, uh, we're oh oh my goodness, I gave away yeah, the answer to one of them. Sorry about that. Really messing it up, Michael. Yeah, let's let's go with uh, let's go with uh, with conspiracy. And I'm not sure what we haven't done yet. What's, um, have we done 100 yet? We did, well, this Cheeto colored nincompoop is credited with waging a secret war against the deep state of satanic pedophiles and cannibals. Mm. <laughs> Come on, this can't be that hard. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> I, I, I sense a political bent to this. Uh, we, we should probably say that the views of our guests don't reflect the blah, 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 whatever. Um, uh, Jimmy Carter. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> Is this, should this category be labeled things that start with T? Probably. Uh, but, so Michael, <laughs> you're wrong. Does anybody want to steal this category? Um, actually, Snooky. Snooky. <laughs> Snooky. <laughs> My, Michael Graff stole it on the, on the chat. <laughs> Who stole it on the chat? Marcel Graff. You got it right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't Marcella, see the chat, so what Marcella did he say? Donald Trump. Donald J. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah. You know why mm -hmm. I use the butthole picture, right? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> that face he makes? All right. Emily, it's on to you. How about just plain bad ideas? Bad ideas? Just plain bad. I don't know which ones we didn't do in this category. Well, pick one and we'll. We did it. We'll. I like high one. numbers. Give me 500. 500. Oh, we have oh, done this. Okay. 500. Give me six, then. So, you, so, like, if she picks one we've already picked, does she lose the 500 points? No, no. no. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm not. laughs> Do, so let's do 600 then. 600. I think we did 600 already. 
We did 600 as oh, well. Oh, man. Okay. I'm going right. to start, start marking them off on my list. So we, Thank uh, you, Farrell. We do this. Okay. 300. We'll just keep going up on the screen. We'll find one. There we go. A piece of regulating equipment that utilities love, but building scientists hate. Remember, there's always a clue in the title. Oh, very cute. I didn't realize that, Michael. Very cute. All right. right. Jews at work here. Let's just, you know. <laughs> I have no idea. Thermostats. <coughs> thermostats? <laughs> Set back thermostats. Set back thermostats. Oh. Lloyd got it, and then Mason came right after. <laughs> nest ben, thermostats. That looks like a nest. Yes, setback thermostats. We hate setback thermostats as a general rule, but why do we hate them? Nobody, nobody can program the right, and they're useless on a high performance house. They're useless on high performance, and on an underperforming house. All they do is drop the temperature, raise the relative humidity, and cause your windows to rot. Well, that's that's in the tundra where you live. Yes. <clears throat> we're, when we're, actually, all you guys live in the tundra. Intelligent right? people live. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only person that lives in a normal place, apparently. <laughs> where you sweat eleven months out of the year. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Atlanta's actually remarkably comfortable. We actually have milder summers than most of you do. They're, they're longer. Lies, but they're lies. No. <laughs> uh, actually. This summer was the first time where Carl was like, you know, he's like, it's 75 degrees. And I'm like, it's 98 degrees. <laughs> Minnesota was like 90 to 105 degrees with 110% humidity all summer. It was horrible. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's see. Where are we? Ben, are we ben, back to you? Ben's next. Yeah. Sure. Let's, uh, let's go conspiracy, please. Back to conspiracy. All right. We've got... Uh, Four, five, and six left, I think. Yeah. Three, four, five. Oh, Let's no, go five. Four, five, and six. Yeah. Okay. Let's go five. Carl? This, this, intervention, this interventionist omnipotent being with multiple personality disorder is known for killing at least half the world's population. Mm. Oh, you got it. Oh, uh, Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. You're so close, God. So God, close. what could be the answer to this? God, the Ark, Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and just so, in case anyone is like, "Oh, you're going after God," let's just be clear: this is the Jewish God of the, you know, <clears throat> Ark of the Covenant, the one, the five books of Moses, and all that. Carl and I are officially uh, licensed to take the piss out of that version of God. So. Ooh, ooh, conspiracy theory on the Ark of the Covenant. What's yes. the conspiracy theory about where it, where the information is housed on how to find the Ark of the Covenant? This is an architecture trivia. Really? Uh, it's burned into the hand of a German scientist. Fort Knox. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh -oh. Did you guys, speaking of which, Emily, did you happen to watch Saturday Night Live uh, last week? Didn't with Jason Sudeikis, where they were writing the Declaration of Independence. And as they're trying to, you know, craft this fine language, one of the guys is like, dude, you know what would be awesome? A treasure map on the back of the Declaration of Independence. And they go through this whole thing where they like, you know, to make national treasure a potential reality. <laughs> anyway. Nicholas Cage will find it for us. He's done some seriously horrible movies in the last five years. <laughs> and everybody keeps calling him for more. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. He's a good actor. Right. Uh, all right. So who's up? I think I'm up. Yeah. Michael, Thanks, where are you going to yeah. take us? I'm, I'm going to slide, slide Emily up so I don't get confused. Um, let's go back to conspiracy. For... Right, we've got four and six left. Okay, let's do four. This architectural style refers to structures attributed to phantom architects built beyond technological capabilities of the time, assigned to empires or civilizations whose mainstream account of events are full of simple contradictions, targeted for demolition for invalid reasons, or conventionally damaged by accidental fires and earthquakes, or by so-called villains, and replaced with an inferior form. Hmm. 
Yeah, if you haven't, this, this is a t- if you haven't happened to run across, this is going to be a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Is it, I know um, the answer. Br- get out. Br- brutalism. You're just looking for. Oh, brutal- Michael, come on! No, no, <laughs> do, I, not, I, I, do I, not take the piss out of brutalism. brutalism well, Lloyd is- just said the same thing, so we'll. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Arrow Serenity uh, is I, awesome. Let's not go there. I, I, I love brutalism, but it's uh, except for all the embodied carbon, but it's uh. No, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this. It's you, you, super you, obscure, but his yes. title really tells you the Tartarian yes. Empire. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's it's hysterical. I actually literally just learned about it today. But Bloomberg calls it a vast worldwide advanced empire. A vast worldwide advanced empire built large cities all over the world. Then the civilization fell by some cataclysm. A few buildings survived, but were recast as modern buildings to disguise the fact that they're actually from an old civilization. Um, wow. Yeah, some, some of the things that are considered Tartarian include the Great Wall, the pyramids, the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank Building, and all these different star-shaped forts all over the world because they- And that, and that building from Ghostbusters. Yes, that, that too, <laughs> absolutely. Right, okay, so I was, I was or I, I'm, I'm extremely food motivated so i saw tartar and i was thinking delicious raw beef and i was trying to think like how how does raw beef turn into (laughs) work with the architecture no that's too bad emily didn't pick that question but yeah i know it would have been really random too because it's super obscure yeah it is very obscure it's so obscure (laughs) i literally found it by just looking googling conspiracy theories (laughs) (laughs) we sound found so much crazy shit out there like yeah it was it we we had to really filter through to find stuff that was worth talking about. There there was so much that we didn't even know. Like Carl's got all of this stuff in Georgia. I, he's never heard of there's there's stuff in Minnesota I've never like yeah. it's amazing when you want to just make stuff out of nothing, uh what you can do. Yeah. Back up to the main main at thing. So it's Emily's turn. My turn. Uh, let's go back to bad ideas. Bad ideas. Okay, we have one, two, f- and four left. Let's do one. One hundred. An arbitrary <laughs> and unnecessary standard of building performance. This is think about. Oh, this is this is this, this is, is, this is, is Michael's. This is Michael's. Game. Well, this is not mine. This is yours. No, no, this I'm, like I'm, half I'm of not the wound up. This, I'm not as wound up on this as you are. <laughs> Arbitrary <laughs> and unnecessary standard of building performance. ASTM. No, ASTM. It's an acronym. Sixty-two-two would be a great one to point out here, but we just figured that was a, like we had this criticism last time we did this, where we were using too many obscure acronyms, and it was like. They were like, they felt like they were crashing a party where everyone knew each other except for them. And we thought, no, we can't go into ASTM stuff because that's just too in the weeds. This is equally in the weeds, but it's not that. Who's going to take the lead with this one? Ben, it's your old boss. Oh, it's my old boss? What's this, communism? (laughs) (laughs) Anybody? Uh, Michael, you going to give it a shot? Lead? Um, I was saying unnecessary. So I'm going to uh, be, be uh, I was, I was multitasking. Did anybody say passive house? I know, I know how much you love passive house. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a simpler than that. And it's, and I think you'll be almost energy star. You may be almost offended by it actually. <laughs> oh, somebody said ACH 50. Yeah. Michael, Michael Chandler said ACH 50, but I, I think more that one ACH 50 is the, is the unnecessary standard, but Michael thinks two, but two. Uh, who can't get two? Come on. Everybody <laughs> can get two. Right. It's so what's the point? Necessary. Right. That's no fun though. That's only, it's only interesting if it's challenging to get there. Agreed. Still arbitrary and unnecessary. It's only challenging if a mouse fart will blow up your building. <laughs> oh, I love that, Emily. This is the new standard. Um, not just a human fart. A mouse fart. A mouse mouse fart. Can't take credit for that. I'm pretty sure that was all John Straub when that, he was on yeah. with his mouse fart jokes. But <laughs> yeah, that sounds like John. I think it applies. Yep. All right. Uh, ben, was that your selection? Uh, no, I think it. I think I'm up now. So I'm going right. to go to uh, 
Uh, once again, oh, that's cute for a thousand. No, no, no that's, you can't go there yet. That, that's the end. That that's about that's about quarter to seven. <laughs> that's about quarter after seven. <clears throat> uh, let's uh, let's uh, see what's happening in really bad ideas. Okay, we have 250, 50, 450, 550, and 700 left. 700. Carl? When human stupidity collides with unlimited financial resources to fix climate change. Remember, there's a clue in the title. Uh, uh, human stupidity collides with unlimited financial resources. Hmm. Hydrogen? I'd, All right. Uh, I think phone phone, phone a friend. Here? Phone a yeah. friend. I thought anybody it was a friend. Blue hydrogen. Right. Yeah. No, no, but nobody in the do, chat's do, do, getting do, do, it. Do, do. All right. I think, Michael, I think we need to. We need to... We got, well, Ben, you got to throw an answer out there before I can pass it off to your. Uh, uh, to your... Tesla. <laughs> no, the answer is not Tesla. <laughs> Michael, Emily, are you going to try and steal? I was going to say living building challenge. <laughs> living building challenge is amazing, awesome, and wonderful. What? I know. <laughs> uh, but true, you need unlimited financial resources to make it happen. That is that is fair. <laughs> um, Ma Michael? I'm, I'm going to say just electric vehicles in general. Uh, Unfortunately, figured. none of you got it right. Carl, tell is, them what they did not win. Geoengineering. Climate, oh, change, is it, yes. climate change is inadvertent, mostly due to ignorance. Geoengineering is the in intentional changes to the climate, including theories such as putting particles in the atmosphere to change clouds. Um, so these theories have uh, people claim that things like Mount Pinatubo eruption. Actually, this theory is based on changes from the Mount Pinatubo eruption, which lowered the global temperature over two years. Things like CO2 removal, all kinds of weird stuff that people are talking about, but so, thankfully nobody's so bon doing. Bonus question. What's the ideal particle to disperse in the atmosphere? Can anybody yeah. guess? No. What you know it? the answer? What is it, Ben? I do. I do. Diamonds. <laughs> Diamonds? <laughs> for Diamonds for real because they are carbon, so they're not going to react with anything and they have a high refractive index, so they'll bounce all the energy back out. But won't they bounce it like in all kinds of directions, including back at the earth? Could well, be it'll get he it'll get held in the in the mesosphere in a layer up there and bounce it back. Funny yeah. little thing about that is, is once we start it, we all have to keep doing it. And then if somebody stops, all that okay. energy that's How stuck outside of the grind the diamonds fine enough into powder to get them up there. <laughs> I don't know. De Beers sure has been doing it for years to control the market, so I'm sure we can ask them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is how every geoengineering uh, discussion starts. Uh, uh, pro probably more drugs involved sometimes, but just like it makes sense when you first talk about it. And then as you get into the details, you're like, I don't think so. Yep. And our like governments are dumping huge resources into investigating it right now. Well, I like how you brought it back to De Beers and Diamonds so that us Jews are once again controlling, <laughs> literally <laughs> controlling the world. <laughs> well, you guys got Hollywood. What else do you want? Come on. Yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> All right, so that was geoengineering. Let me mark that one off. Okay, uh, is, is that Michael? You next? Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go. Bad ideas. Carl, uh, what do we have left on the map? Uh, two hundred, yeah. Two hundred and four hundred. Yeah, let's do two hundred. Oh, this small cult. We did this is, one. Oh, we did two hundred. I'm sorry, we missed. I'm sorry about that. My bad. So you're gonna have to up your game here at 400, Michael. Okay, okay, bring it. This cladding type is a darling of any architects of architects and the bane of any contractor's existence. Darling of architects, bane of contractors. Hmm. We do, talked about this last year too. We had lots of good pictures. I'm going to go with let's say uh, Hardy, Hardy Plank. Or, or fi Fiber Cement and Nope. Nope. That's the bane of OSHA. All right. Anybody want to steal? Open joint cladding. No, Michael loves open joint cladding. He thinks it's the, he thinks it's the best to. thing in the world. Stucco. Stucco. <laughs> I love stucco. And why? Um, it's a nightmare, though. No. 
No, no, this, this, this is a bigger this nightmare. This is worse. This is worse yeah. than stucco. Yeah. Okay, Emily? Michael, let's show it to him. I don't know. Ephus. Oh, no. no. I don't remember. Oh, in groove. <laughs> it's like, didn't anybody ever hear of shiplap, which looks the same and doesn't buckle and rot? <laughs> <laughs> So this is well, the bane of contractors of that don't understand that wood actually moves. Exactly. So. Yeah. This one on the right is some contemporary house, which is the exterior trim on a house that in, uh, and the one on the left is this restaurant near my, near my house that this, it just, it failed miserably. And it's also rotting like crazy because they just didn't know what to do. But yeah, it's a, uh, it should be, it should be uh, forbidden for exterior siding. We actually have a house here in Minnesota that we that we built for <clears throat> a builder, interestingly enough, who specified a um, thermally modified ash. And the company, you know, said, yep, nope, it's guaranteed not to move. Da, 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 da. And we said, well, you got we're, 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 you got to sign this waiver because if we install this stuff, we're not on the hook for it. And sure enough, same thing. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm. Uh I'm I'm curious about open joint cladding. I love love the look, um, at least when it's new. But just why? Um, I just don't understand why why you would intentionally put up cladding that leaks like crazy. Like to me, you should put up cladding that keeps most of the water out instead of lets a bunch of it in. Well, you so should, what if you have a really robust like weather barrier behind it? You're fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. I think that Michael, you raise a great point, and I think that there's. I would say, generally speaking, in the building world, there is a radical misunderstanding of the purpose of cladding. That, right. you know, cladding is armor. Cladding is there to prevent sticks, rocks, and other things from hitting the weatherproof layer of the house, which is hidden behind it, right? But we got into this thing where we had painters caulking. Caulking everything, yeah. Right? You know, and like trying to deal with, create this like impervious layer it's the weird, like for me, when I see people like, they're like, oh, my stucco has some hairline cracks. We should go caulk those. And it's like, you realize that it's stucco, right? Like the, the cracks. whole thing. <laughs> it's like, it always cracks. Oh, you've, you've seen stucco before, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, I, I, I've always said that if, you, if your weather barrier was beautiful and incredibly durable, who needs siding? You know, it's like. There it is. Yeah. So to, for me, open joint cladding is, kind of this beautiful point where we get to making sure that that weatherproofing is beautiful and beautifully well done. And then you get to put up decorative claddings to be decorative. And you suddenly get licensed to play a lot more with how you want to resolve all of those surfaces and those textures and color and line and do all the you fun want, stuff. You want a place for all those bugs to live in your house, Michael. You want, you want a nice little place where they can get in and out easily. <laughs> I don't know what it is with people in, in up in Vermont. They are terrified of like of critters. Every time we put, do a thing on open joint cladding, I get a dozen comments. What about the critters? And I'm like, what critters are you scared of moving into open joint cladding? It's the least hospitable environment for any critter to live in. Yeah, okay. rain going Wait, this I way and air going this way. I do have to share this. Lloyd says he has bats behind the cedar siding on his house. That's because he doesn't have open joint cladding. Come on, Lloyd, get with the program. <laughs> I, I, I consider that a benefit, not not a not a. Dang. Not a now I don't have to buy bad houses. Negative. Yeah. Right. Sorry, they eat the, they eat all the mosquitoes. Right. Right. So the so the conspiracy here might might be that uh, that cladding is 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 primarily to keep the water out. It's it's primarily to protect the actual waterproof layer. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's how Sometimes, the deep yeah. states controlling the food supply by killing all the bats <laughs> that's it that that's it man that is totally it <laughs> all right who's next who remembers i think that Actually, was me so i think up? i think i think that was me so i think ben's up no emily's, no, emily's up, up. Emily's, emily's up. up uh myths myths all right myths we have 300 500 and 600 left oh 600 let's go for a high I like, I like Emily. I like how you always are just like, let's go. Let's go straight to the top. So, so get is, jiggy with it, Carl. Gluten is to chiropractors <laughs> and blank is to green building extremists. 
I don't know. I got oh. totally distracted by the gluten. Hydrogen, helium, <laughs> lithium, beryllium, boron. I, I appreciate that it's hard for you to figure these things because they came out of Michael's brain. <laughs> so their, their place of origin is really kind of dangerous. You know, the worst part is after writing these things, I'm going upstairs and I'm cracking all these jokes to my family and they're just not yeah. laughing. <laughs> no laughs. They're just, yeah, like what? <laughs> Up here. Any any luck, Emily? CO two? I don't know. No, no, no. Come on, it's simple. It's a really simple one. What? Simple is always harder. That's why this is six hundred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, no, you actually think there was some logic to the scoring? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally random. I have no idea. Anybody want to steal? I, I, I think I think I think you're uh, talking about foam, maybe specifically spray foam. Yep. And Michael oh, Chandler, oh, Michael Chandler got that one. Way to go, Chandler! Uh, spray foam yeah. insulation. Nice. And, I should have um, known that. Two things I hate: gluten and spray foam. Right. You were uh, right. Should have yeah. been easy. Actually, Lloyd Lo- 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 got it even before that. Okay. So, so we'll call it a tie. I think as soon as you said it came out of Michael's brain, both Chandler and Lloyd were like, oh, spray foam. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Ben, it's back up to you. Okay. Oh, that's cute for a thousand. No, not yet. We have to wait till seven o'clock for that. All right, let's go to uh, bad ideas, bad ideas. uh, I think we're actually done with bad ideas. We're done with bad ideas. All right. We have some really bad ideas left. I have some really bad ideas too. So let's go there. Carl, what do we have open? No, really b- bad ideas is done, but really oh. bad ideas has some things open. Go to really bad ideas. Man. We got 250, 50, 450, and 550 available. Whew. Actually, 50 we might have already done. 50 we did. That yeah. was us, Carl. Yes, right. That's what I thought. All we right. Said, so what is there again? 250, 450, and 550. Uh, 250, please. The oversizing of this equipment results in mold and mildew in the south and in the north now. Because it's hot up here. (laughs) And getting hotter. What is HVAC or air conditioning equipment? Good job. There it is. What is AC? We've actually recently, we've been called into all these apartment projects, both new and rehab, that are just having insane moisture issues because they're putting cheap ton and a half air uh, heat pumps in these like five and 600 square foot apartments and they just don't want to listen to us that this isn't going to work. They run for like 37 seconds and then they shut off. Yeah. And then they have just like, they just put supply ventilation in and just dump in, um, <laughs> even dump, more, in air, right? dump in, you know, 90, 90% humidity air into the space. Yeah. What well, could it, possibly it, go wrong? Exactly. A, a question is like, as our buildings get, more efficient and as equipment gets more efficient, should we really be expecting our, 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 our thermal control equipment to also control moisture? Like, like should we expect air conditioning to do both air conditioning and dehumidification perfectly, or should we have two separate pieces of equipment to handle two different um, tasks? It's, I, you know, I think there's probably, you know, if they actually started using really good, small mini split equipment, um, they would do, they do, they do a pretty good job without dehumidification. Um, I think it, it, you know there will there's probably going to be a point as, as the buildings get better and better we will need more dehumidification. But dehumidification is frustrating because you know it creates heat, so you end up having to oh, you have to recool shit all the time. It's really it's, it's only a pain. in the south is this a problem, Carl? Wait, wait, it's like 110 degrees where you live in the summertime. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's like negative seven there. No, the summertime. Right now, summertime yeah, yeah, right now yeah. we're like you know it's a balmy 42 degrees. <laughs> yeah, during the yeah. day. The, we're switching over to doing a dedicated dehumidification in all of our projects because when you get into a high performance house, you know, yeah. these issues come up when it's the shoulder season and a high performance house becomes like nine months out of the year or shoulder season. Yeah. So, where, where, where are you been? Yeah. Where are you located? I'm in Connecticut, New York. Okay. Yeah. In my, in my house, it was interesting. I, I used mini splits and then I saw a ductless mini splits and I actually put a dehumidifier in at one point. Um, and I realized it produced so much heat that it just wasn't, it wasn't working since it wasn't tight. So I actually have a really good solution now. You know, I keep my house fairly warm, like, you know, 78 in the summertime and it's pretty comfortable, but if it gets a little 
humid in the shoulder seasons, I just turn the temperature down a couple of degrees and it's perfectly comfortable. You know, and so I you put know, it down to 76. I think what that, if you can't turn the thermostat down anymore? Not speaking well, for I, a friend well, here. I don't have that. I don't have that problem. Um, you know, I, I've not, I've not yet had that problem where it's, um, where it's, it's too humid and like, and, and way too, way too cool. I, I really do think though, I mean, it, already there's a couple that are coming online, but it's going to be this integrated systems type controls that utilize your ERV, your heating, cooling system, your humidification, dehumidification system, and, and, you know, kind of a processor that monitors all that and decides which piece of equipment to turn on when, so that your relative humidity is kind of always sitting, you know, right in the mid. And your house doesn't go negative when you turn the bath fan and the rain hood yeah. on, and yeah, right. We were I, I just at we're, we're we're sorry, Carl. No, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I no think, we were I, just at the the Fiat convention last week, and um, we were discussing this because we had. Uh, uh, Zender, uh, Build Equinox, which is the Serb unit, Swagon, which is a Swedish unit, and then one other ERV manufacturer. And we were discussing exactly this. And my comment to all of them was, is they have to make it so that they all communicate with one another. Because otherwise we're going to end up with like, oh, the Panasonic language systems. And then you're stuck into only using Panasonics. Whereas if we look at commercial controls, they all operate on a standard form factor. So why can't we have residential that operates like commercial and yeah, and the, the, the problem with it is, you know, I mostly work on apartments. And the problem is, is that, you know, they are, they are, tend to be low budget with, you know, low budget in a $30 million project. But, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have the budget to put very sophisticated systems in 350 apartments. You know, we need somebody, somebody needs to come up with something that's, that's like a unified system that, that deals with these things. So, so you're not trying to program four different manufacturers to talk to each other. It, it might happen before I die or retire. I don't know. Right. Or, I mean, there, or there is like, like the serve or the minute air unit that does, does a lot of things at once, but they're expensive and maybe finicky. Yeah. I don't know. You're, I, I, you're I'm using. Actually, I'm really frustrated with the, the HVAC manufacturers because they really like the big ones don't make other than the mini splits. They don't make anything less than a ton and a half ton, a one and a half ton heat pump, which is, you know, basically a kind of a piece of shit. Um, and I think that if they actually, they could probably make a good piece of equipment that is not obscenely expensive, that would be good for small houses and apartments, but they just, they don't see, they don't need to, so they don't care and they don't do it. It's not even that small houses. I mean, most of the things that we're building these days have in Minnesota, you know, we're looking at like a 24 to 25,000 max BTU load requirement. Yeah. And the smallest piece of conventional equipment is 60,000 BTUs, right? Well, that's, that's okay. That's furnaces, you know, air conditioners, heat pumps so, are available. But, yeah, in you're talking cooling, degrees. I'm talking heat, but it's, there, there's just not this demand for these massively huge, even on a 3,500 square foot or 5,000 square foot home, we just don't need the size of equipment right. that we used to need. Yeah, it, HVAC equipment has not caught up with building performance. <laughs> and speaking of which, we are getting behind in our game and running low on time. This we is could, a two hour show though. We could, no, it's an hour and a half. We, could, we have about a half an hour left. We could go to the bonus round. I think that would be, that's, that'd be- Oh, no, no, no. If we have an hour and a half, we have plenty no, no. of time. No, we have a half an hour left, Michael, and we probably should stop before 7.30. So let's, somebody- Well, we, we, we got, we got one we more left to conspiracy. Left? We have Conspir one left to conspiracy, and then basically we're on to the bonus round. All right, Michael, you're into conspiracy then for the remaining category, whether you like six, it or not. Six, okay, let's do it. I accept. Carl, what? Six. Oh, oh, Michael doesn't. Oh, the um, big ones. Yeah, this Oof. is out of your comfort I don't, I don't, zone, dude. I don't like dun, big dun, numbers. Well, let's, let's see what you got. This structure houses an entire underground city, houses the headquarters of the Illuminati, was built by Nazis, looks like a swastika from the air, was paid for by a mysterious organization that doesn't exist. It's also a satanic temple and a UFO beacon, which Michael spelled wrong, but we won't, we won't tell him that. <laughs> oh, snap. A beacon. A beacon. <laughs> Ufo <laughs> bacon. Ah. And the, remember, there's a clue in the title. I don't know what your clue it means, Michael. Oh, come on. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> Nelly. Any, anybody? Anybody get this no. one? It's not the Pentagon, Pentagon. guys, whoever's out there. Uh, it's not the Cold Climate Research Center. Okay, so anybody who knows me knows what my absolute favorite pastime sport is. And 
probably knows where I like to engage in that sport. And so would know where I'd have to go to get to, to engage. Oh, oh the, uh, the, uh, Denver International the, Airport. The Denver yes, Airport. Yes. You got it. Yes. <laughs> this is, I love this. Let's, let's show the pictures. Okay. So you look on this stone on the left and at the very bottom, it says the new world airport commission is on this stone at the Denver airport. And that doesn't exist. And then the Denver airport has all these, these posters on their website. They have totally embraced it. <laughs> they also have great murals of like jackboot soldiers like knocking down doors and stomping on people yeah the- yeah which is supposed to be the according to the artist something about peace uplifting and yeah terrorism or something i can't yeah. remember it was like some yeah so actually no like you look at this thing it's the, the denver has the den files as opposed to the x files they're like it's actually pretty funny they're totally into this conspiracy theory they they are loving it I think they just, I think they did it on purpose to make, to make it a thing. Yeah. Well, you know? the, fact, the fact that they also have the, um, the Mason symbol on their, on their, the stone they put in there was really funny. And by the way, did you know that the sculptor of that ridiculous horse died when the horse sculpture fell over and crushed him? Oh, wow. wow. No joke. Wow. That, that's it. Is that in the airport? I, I've never seen it. No, no, no. It's like, it's just part of the like, you know. P.S. By the way, the guy yeah. who made that crazy horse that's thirty feet tall, it fell over when they were installing it and killed the guy who wow. it. Amazing. Which is proof that, you know, definitely the Illuminati. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we've got we've got four in, in really bad ideas. We have four fifty and five fifty left. Ma- uh, All right, Emily, you're up. Ah, uh, let's go with five fifty. Emily, always shooting high. Yeah. Life finds a way, Carl. In an effort to rid the world of malaria, scientists who'd never read Jurassic Park, also spelled wrong, Michael, dreamed up this idea and released them into the wild. Would you stop pointing out when <laughs> I made a grammatical error in my 2 a.m. crafting? Yeah. Velociraptors. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real thing. That really did happen. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's just a stupid fucking idea. Excuse my language. I have, we have no neut- idea. Read the we chat, neutered, oh, neutered Other kind mosquitoes. of dinosaur? I mean, I watched Jurassic Park when I was little. I was traumatized by it. <laughs> Do you remember remember that 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 uh uh um uh, 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 what's it, Jeff Goldblum? His thing. He's like, first it's all laughing and you know and silliness, and then comes the screaming and the running and the right. Yes. Yeah. So same similar thing, right? Like life finds a way. So the this this particular creature was engineered like the dinosaurs, so that it could not reproduce, and was released into the wild. To oh, came to it particularly insidious disease that plagues much of the third world. Read the chat, Emily. Read the chat. <laughs> Asian beetles? Mosquitoes. No! Yes, mosquitoes, yes. <laughs> mosquitoes. I was going to say mosquitoes before you told me to read the chat and the bottom thing said Asian beetles. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally, wait, wait, don't tell me. <laughs> the <Zeta>. net <laughs> mosquitoes. In fact, we uh, did release millions of these things in the hopes that they would reproduce with regular mosquitoes and that they would have no offspring and somehow end malaria. So what happened? Uh, well, you know, they've done it so far, you know, mixed results. My wife works for Johns Hopkins University in infectious disease communication. So uh, I guess she'll tell me when, when it's, when it's worked. Okay. All right. We've got <laughs> what and we have four fifty left and really bad ideas. And then we're on to the bonus round. All right, Ben, this is you. Uh, I'll take uh, that. Oh, that's cute for a thousand. (laughs) (laughs) This This kid oriented product seeks to instill the seeds of pyromania. No one's ever going to get this. It's just, but it's funny. (laughs) Bic lighters. Strike anywhere matches. Zippos. (laughs) Yeah, no, you'll never get this. It's just, it's just a unique thing, but it was easy bake ovens. Not a bad, not a bad guess. Um, Michael, Emily. Wizard stick. 
Yeah. No, okay. Spark- sparkler. Yeah, just sparklers. Yeah. Nobody. Okay, I gotta say, this. nobody's gonna get this because it's a very narrow, unique thing. So we just have to show it to you. It's my first fire. Wow. <laughs> so that's a it thing. Comes huh? with the gasoline can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it comes these, with a gas can. Oh God. <laughs> these are actually just. There's a whole series of these. These are just boxes that they sell. They're empty, and you just put gifts in them for kids. <laughs> oh, you should look up. Sometimes look up obvious plant. Obvious plant is like this whole series of like spoof toys. Yeah, it's sorry. Yeah. But Side yeah, but this I like this this the store near me actually sells these several of these in boxes. You can you just you can buy an empty box and give it to, give it to a kid. So I actually, Carl, I did buy a couple of these empty boxes and use them as gifts gift boxes for my kids. Mm-hmm. And there's one that is kind of like a brush bristle toilet bar cleaner on a wheel, and it's it's in lieu of toilet paper. It just <laughs> Like a car wash, it spins really fast. <laughs> Do they like it? Okay, uh, we are on to the bonus round. Bonus round. This is your chance to make real money and get ahead. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. We actually have two more in myths. We have 300 and 500 oh, left in myths. I'm sorry. Snap. All right. Back to myths. Michael. Okay. 300 or 500? A little 300. How did I know he was going to go low? Yeah. How, how did Arlo? you know? Ooh. This controversy. Con- this control layer is largely unimportant in temperate climates. Vapor uh, control. Yes, very good. Michael has a de- oh, wait, Michael not has- vaping. <laughs> Michael, Michael tried to think this was insulation, but it's it's a oh, lead plaques. I like that one. That's good. <laughs> okay, so Emily, your Emily. next one. You you get you get five hundred in myths. That's <laughs> we're, we're going to assign you to that. This popular sheet goods properties and air barrier was recently erroneously called into question in a deceptive marketing move disguised as research. <laughs> <laughs> what could this possibly be? <laughs> Which one worked really well? Well, I, I clearly I missed this or missed the show sheetrock. <laughs> <laughs> Popular sheet kids property. Yeah, Michael, actually, you know what? Michael knows what this is. Be- yeah. Beaver barf. Yeah. Be- beaver board. I've seen it myself. I've seen it myself not not work as an air barrier. But... Well, no. no. Oh, wait. <laughs> not beaver board. <laughs> we just talked about this. Oriented strand board. Rated as an air barrier, much like drywall. But those nut jobs over at Passive House want to put this thing under pressure like it's on the moon, and of course it fails. Our words of wisdom, Carl, are? What? I have no idea what you're talking Don't about. Don't build a submarine out of OSB. <laughs> it will fail. For houses, it's just fine. Yeah, it works fine for you. Yeah. Well, if you, if you don't need to get down to like 0.01 ACH50, it works. Again, farting, to blowing get the up plaque. houses. Right. Yeah. Okay, bonus round. Ben, you're first. All right. I'll take, uh, oh, that's cute for a thousand. <laughs> oh, 101. Oh, 101. Definitely. Yeah. Worldwide domination. 101. What? While the name of this cult suggests <laughs> absence of mechanical devices, they actually rely on mechanical systems and complex controls. Ah, uh, things that start with a P. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drawing a total blank here. I have no idea. <laughs> Not even a clue. <laughs> oh, passive house. Yep, we got it. Ding, ding, Michael. Ding. Pick one. Let's go. I'm going to throw Michael off and go with 102. Oh, he's aiming high. <laughs> okay. This oh, is my. Another, this one is another one you're not going to get. This but, hold on, a- Carl. Yeah. In your yes. best, best George Takai. Oh my! No, I'll let you. I'll let you do that one. Come on. <laughs> this device is for parents who are too damn lazy to get up and feed the baby themselves. They'll stay hydrated and happy while you get back to your Zoom call. Hmm. Is there is there some sort of kegerator for formula? <laughs> that, that's actually a pretty good guess. <laughs> Damn good. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Michael. Oh, it's, it's the crib dribbler. <laughs> Excellent. 
<laughs> this, in my head, a hamster bottle for babies. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was in the same store that the my first fire was. <laughs> I love that they have their good for infant energy drink as if the la- like the last thing you'd want to get your child <laughs> is an energy it's drink. Stu- it's good for Rondo. stew and stew and cocoa as well. <laughs> You've got one dribbler, and then you've got another dribbler shortly thereafter. <laughs> okay, so who's all right, who's, so one hundred one and one hundred two are down. Emily, got, Emily, are you going to go for one hundred five? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> got to keep it we consistent. Know you so well. <laughs> okay, Carl. More things that start with P. <laughs> As part of a multinational corporate scheme to sell billions of board feet of foam board, this home certification standard was created. What is Bazimus? <laughs> that was a tough one. That was tough. I'm really impressed, Emily. You pulled that one off. That was really hard. That was the most <laughs> difficult one. Uh, yeah, I think it was it, at one point somebody decided, like, figured out that some climate you need 14 inches of foam underneath your slab with Passive House. And just kind of, <laughs> that was like, eh, it might be a bit excessive. Carl, you and I were at a, a dinner where they, presented an award to somebody who had built this house and it was like this big, you know, environmental thing. And it was this, they had something like 15 inches of XPS all around the house. Yeah. And Alex Wilson was like, well, you know, their carbon penalty is only 485 years. So, you know, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Nobody's going to remodel it or touch it in that time frame. I'm sure it'll pay off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. All right, so we got 100, 103, and 104 left. Ben? Oh, uh, 103. Prime man. This certification program was recently overhauled as a part of a secret plot to drive HERS Raiders completely insane. <laughs> Remember, there's a uh, in the name. Checklists. I love checklists. What is Energy Star? Yeah. Oh! And, and actually, specifically, I'm referring to Energy Star multi filming New Construction, which we were just, we have a project coming up, an apartment building, and we just sat down with my, my couple of project managers yesterday. And there are five checklists that total 22 pages with three different certification paths with slightly different requirements from each. And the, the co- combined number of footnotes, anyone have guessed how many footnotes there are on those checklists? Just take a wild guess. Three pages. No, get 187 footnotes. <laughs> People I are count, definitely going to read I counted those. them today. <laughs> it is, it's completely insane. I don't know, like, I don't know who thought it up, but they are just, I think, you know, I think they're, sad, they're sadists is really what it comes down to. Oh, I actually was thinking about this. I thought, I wonder if, you know, if after Sam left, if, whoever they hired next had a secret hatred, you know, kind of like Trump hired people who hated the departments that he hired them for. If someone had a secret hatred for energy star and they were like, we're going to make this so insidiously awful that we're just going to like, it will implode from the inside. I don't know, but the multi, the new multi multi family program is kind of nuts. All right. Next like, up. 104 Michael. left. I know where he's going. He's going 104. Michael, are you going to go 100? 100. 100. Yeah. 100. What sham industry relies on fear, misinformation, and pseudoscience to address unwanted biological dance parties? <laughs> oh, Lloyd said well certification, which isn't the answer, but it's a good one. I'm going to, I'm going to say the foam. <laughs> that industry. is a good one. No. No, I know better. Michael loves his foam. Anybody else want to guess on this one? Industry. Mold. Yes, mold. Mold. Did you, did you think of that? Did you think of it or did you see it in the chat, Ben? Which one? No, I thought of it. Yeah. So yeah, you know, now I'm at I'm at 285,000 points as of. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you yeah. doing great? I, I'm you know, it, I'm yeah. Mold. So this whole mold thing is actually, at least in our state, the Minnesota Department of Health actually on their website, if you look up mold, it's got like this big like exclamation part thing. And it's like, warning, if someone tries to sell you these services, we don't endorse it. It's a bunch of bullshit. Don't believe it. It's like it's gotten to that point where 
it's such nonsense and yeah if you just you know if you build right and have well properly sized air conditioning and dehumidification you won't have any mold well but the big challenge is of course these people come in they do like what they call a spore sample right they go into the house yeah and they sample like oh you've got mold spores no shit sherlock go outside and do the same freaking sample guess what you'll find fewer spores like they are one of the kingdoms of life we coexist with these things they're all around us all the time Cheers to unwanted spores. Here's to the (laughs) spore drive. I really want the spore drive to happen. I really (laughs) am like rooting for the spore drive. All right. uh, Emily, I think you're up and it's 104 is your last one. All right. All right. Carl doesn't know what a spore drive is, so we're going to go on to 104 because he's old. This movement is part of a deep state plot to have everyone move out of climate zone six to eight to expand their mind control towers disguised as windmills and solar farms. The movement, the... Think, think that kind of that semi-moron Nate the House Whisperer. <laughs> Nate's a good guy, come on. He's a good guy, but he's missing half his brain, so... <laughs> Like most libertarians. It's like they had brain damage <laughs> in an early age. Electrify everything? Bump. Yes! Exactly. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael so wants to continue burning fossil fuels that, you know. I don't know. I just like living it. in a place without warmth. <laughs> you know what they say in Minnesota is you can see the sun, you just can't feel it. <laughs> Except, in, except when it's 110 in the summertime. That's right. true. So, well, we're actually, you know, we're we're we have we're on to oh, that's cute, which is going to be it's going to be fairly quick. But we have 15 minutes left. We can we can uh, finish this up and then ramble on a little bit at the end. So, we yeah, we thought there'd be more controversy. We thought you guys would get angry and and push back on some of the answers to these questions. <laughs> we're being polite. Yeah, yeah, I'm internalizing it. I'm, I'm gonna gonna take it out on the on the on the heavy bag later. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or you did say you're into guns, Mike. Michael. Like, yeah, you're gonna go shooting later. Yeah, he does yeah, have yeah, one good. for each hand. I'm just I've got, saying. I've, I've got I've got a tw- twelve gauge right here. <laughs> wow. Don't aim it at the at the cinematographer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's. A I don't know, Carl. Okay. So should we move into the final round? I mean, this is the most. These are the mo- this is the hardest round. Yeah, it is. And, it, and in and fact, every th- all of the points that you've earned thus far could disappear might, yeah. in an instant yeah, if, if you, you get, get if, any one of these questions wrong. That's how challenging and important <laughs> these questions are. Yeah. Can I go to really bad ideas for a thousand? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't exist. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> we should ask though. Do um. We didn't do limericks. We didn't do things that rhyme. We didn't do any of the other cool things. But are there other conspiracy theories or really horrible ideas that you guys wish we had brought up or raised uh, in in this deeply enlightening BS and beer episode? It is. It was deeply enlightening, Michael. <laughs> that I can say. I'll, I'll share. I'll share one, and this is a. a... One that was new to me, I did some work for a polyiso foam manufacturer a couple of years ago, and they told me that they get about a call a day or more into their tech line asking what kind of tape they have to use on the edge of the board so that the R value doesn't leak out. Interesting. <laughs> so Dan, Dan Colbert and I came up with a brilliant idea. We're going to sell R value sealing tape and then an R value leakage detector, which is just a battery with a red light on the end of it. So you can test mm-hmm. if your R value is leaking out of your board and add more tape. Um, I, that kind of reminds me of something. I, I saw this. 10 layers of tape deep. <laughs> I was, and I'll be I was, happy to send them more. Yes. I, that reminds me. I saw this really contemporary house that this guy designed years ago and it got like lead platinum and stuff like that. And it had, it had hollow, it had basically rectangular tube steel all over it that was basically with no there's no insulation either on the out, outboard or inboard it was just straight it was just trimmed and i asked him how he dealt with the stuff because oh, i have a thermal bridge a thermal break tape i'm putting on it they, they somebody sold him some kind of thermal break tape 
that he taped over the steel that he said was going to cut the cut the heat transfer from the steel to the outside. And that kind of reminds me, I think it was the Simpsons where he said, in my house household, we observe the laws of, of physics. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's a law, not an option. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I never quite figured out what thermal break tape was, but somebody was selling it a, long, a while ago. Oh, God. Got nanoparticles in it. Yes. Yeah. You know? Uh, um, well, it, it could be like product? phase it, change tape. Is, is it like a bunch of paraffin in it? It's like phase change tape. I, it, it was like literally, a, it was a piece of tape. It was like a 60 mil tape. tape or something. Yeah. It was, Have it you was, it was stopped weird. back to see how he's doing with his energy bills? No. It's, uh, it's just, it's what, you know, it's a, <laughs> it was an expensive house. I mean, just like, you know, they don't, they don't care. They don't care about it. All right, Mike, are they ready for the cute? Oh, that's cute. I think it's... Oh, that's it's, cute. I was just thinking when they were talking about, we were talking about nanoparticles, there was, the, there is actually that, that product. I don't know if you remember this. We saw it years and years ago. It was about a quarter inch thick. And I can't remember the name of the product now. It was like Aerogel. Aer- or Aerogel, nano- yeah. Aerogel's, pre- Aerogel's pretty impressive. Um, Aerogel's not, legit. Yeah. 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 But it's, but it's not a, it's not a piece if of If you can afford because, it. <laughs> yeah. It's got, it's but, a but you can't put a nail through it. This is the problem, right? It was like, it was awesome, but you couldn't use it as a tape where you'd then nail the sheeting through it because you'd destroy the product. No, actually, I think one of the coolest things, I remember um, it was Calwall, that big the fiberglass company, made, was filling their walls with it. So they had translucent walls that were like R30. It was really yeah. very cool. Yeah. All right, let's go to, oh, that's cute. Everybody gets one question. Oh, that's cute. This is true. So you all have a chance to lose all of your points or quintuple your points. And and the, the the whether it's right or wrong is completely subjective, just so you know. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, let's see, are we where are we at in our order, pecking order here? Who's got the most points? Ben, you had 284,000 points last we checked. Michael, yeah, you had uh, 200 I've- points. Yeah, I think I have like 250. 250 points. And Emily, you have 7,643 points, if I recall, with two steals. I think, I think and Emily a phone a friend left. Uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, because I cheated on my phone a friend. If you don't tell people, you're phoning the chat box. Thank All right, so Emily, you're up first, unless you'd like to pass and let someone else experience the risk before you experience the risk, because we go in order. Oh no, I'm all in. I'm all in. Bet You're it all. all this is this is this is Jeopardy. Bet it all. Either go home with a dollar. Let's make it a true daily double, a... Alex. All right, Texas Hold'em Jeopardy meets I don't know where we're, what we're doing anymore. Okay, which sh- Carl? Okay, this this is my grandson Arthur. Oh no, no, you don't get to share. Well, and you and you and, and this is and this is Michael's daughter on the right. So. Well, wait, so this is sub- subjective, right? And there isn't Absolutely. a right or wrong answer because it's both these babies are gorgeous. But I got to go with my Somebody's going to be crushed. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, yes. The yes. unicorn. You got go to go with the ladies. Woo-hoo. You know, and Emily, you know what she is for Halloween? What's that? A winged unicorn. And I, I was going to put that picture there to bias the judges. And I thought that's just, it's unfair <laughs> to Carl. And well, so so she and then a, I came as a unicorn. She, she is a week older than Arthur, so when she was born, I basically said, "Congratulations on having the cutest child in the world for a week." <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ben, you're in second place, so here we go. Let's Emily see. It. Just quintupled her points, <laughs> and she was already at seven million. Now at 30 35 seconds. and a quarter million points. So good luck. Which child is cuter? Who's I, the gray haired child. <laughs> <laughs> the, big, the biggest, the Carl. biggest child in the picture. The one thing, actually, this was great. This is my daughter got this little shirt for him. It says curmudgeon in training. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the little lush on the left, please. <laughs> So Coraline found, I have all of these for these golf, this golf competition uh, called the Knicker Open that, that I help run. We had these flasks made 
and I've got a small, like five or six of them in a cabinet. And she grabbed one and we filled it up with water. And she, this is her favorite water bottle. Oh, there we go. Carl's got this one. is the one from your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my wife is furious that I, not truly furious, but, you know, humorously furious that I posted a picture of our daughter looking like she's a lush on, on a syndicated YouTube show that will be broadcast on HBO. Prime time, yeah. Prime. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is BS and beer, so I mean, she's not drinking beer probably, but right. But it's it's, it's in the spirit. She I'm brought her own drink. It's all good. Yes. Bring your own bottle. Michael, who has more ink and the cuter kid? Michael definitely has more ink. I'll give him that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't wait this question at all. <laughs> no, no, not you're looking at all. like you're getting ready to be in a NASCAR race or something, there, Michael. <laughs> he, does, he does look, uh, yeah. The, the trucker hat sort of does it all. Yeah. <laughs> but so that same shirt has matches my tattoo, which is actually, it was very cute. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with uh, with Michael having more ink, but uh, Carl Carl's Carl's kid there is looking yes! cute on this photo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna split my vote. <laughs> I think A A works in, in this instance, of course. Oh, A, A, A works. Yeah. Go with A. A, you're right. A always works. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have we actually wrapped up early this time. Aren't you Who would have sunk it? Yeah, I'm surprised it went that fast. Well, I mean, this is not our normally Carl and I run long, yeah. but we can pontificate and generally offend people for as long <laughs> as you'd like. So, <laughs> by the way, I have moved on to a second beer. This is from Falling Knife Brewery, and it is called 365 Days of Incidents. Seems uh, left. Rolling in at 9.6% alcohol. This is a very hazy, you can't see through it, Ooh. IPA. Wow. It's like nail polish mm. remover. Mm. <laughs> so good. What do you guys think about um, replacement replacement windows? Is replace is are, are replacement windows a good a good value? Is it a, is a, is it a sham? Is it somewhere to, to, in between? To me, re replacement windows to me are for comfort and con and comfort and convenience. Um, like a, so, you know if. If you're in a really cold climate, um, you know, if, if they don't, you know, actually in most climates, if they don't work, you want to replace them somehow. Uh, the challenge is, is that if you're not, you know, if you're just going to like pop them out and put them back in, you can actually create more problems than you're creating. I actually really like sash replacement kits. If the window frames in good shape, I just actually did that at my daughter's house a couple of years ago because they, you know, the, she, has, she has no insulation on the walls. It's a hundred year old house and the windows are a mess, but the frames were fine. So we just put sash replacement kits in and they work great. Um, you know, storm windows are good too. If the windows are good shape, storm windows, you know, I, I love this old joke. It's like, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a blonde joke. Don't defend anybody, but she has all her windows replaced and she never pays the bill. And the guy says, how come you didn't pay the bill? She says, well, you told me these windows are going to pay for themselves. <laughs> yeah, there's, 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 I think the, I, the numbers I've read is there are like 60, 80 year paybacks ROIs on windows from, a, you know, from an energy yeah. standpoint. Right, but, you know, right. But, but if you want to uh, be able to open, if you want to be able to open your windows, and you don't want to be drafty. It's worth replacing them. Yeah, yeah, no, well, or lots of reasons to replace them. It's just, it's just. I, I hear from both companies and homeowners that they want to change the windows to save energy. Oh yeah, no, or, totally. or save money. I mean, it'll say save a little bit, but 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 paybacks are always. Yeah, not to free. save. It's not to save money. I mean, if you yeah. if you're comfortable, don't don't replace your windows. There's no reason yeah. to. Quality of life. I mean, this is. Yeah. Boiling things down to, to BTUs or dollars is kind of a silly, like there are very few things that we actually purchased looking for an ROI. Like <clears throat> your car has got no ROI. Your TV has got no ROI. Like your grant, your grant accounters have no ROI. Your, grant, yeah, your computer has no, like your computer, literally two years after you got bought your $2,000 fancy MacBook, whatever fucking pro thing, it's garbage. Right? So I mean, I think that when we get to windows, the window manufacturing industry mistakenly decided to anchor on the idea that they were saving energy with replacing windows instead of really focusing on like 
comfort, quality, you know, op- be, like Carl said, if you want to be able to open and close your windows, you know, replace your windows. But if they're fogging, replace them. But the reality is that 100 year old windows with storms are every bit as efficient as. I wouldn't say every bit as efficient. The, I mean, they, they, model, they are, they're model, reasonably yeah, efficient. They can be. They are as efficient as insulated standard double hungs. Not the same as if you go to like, yeah, right. you know, no, thermally yeah. broken, triple glaze. I mean, obviously we have layers of performance, but right. yeah, yeah, you're not, the weight pocket, I mean, this is the thing, right? It's not the windows. It's the space around the windows. It's the weight pockets. Yeah. It's the fact that we built houses, you know, and be like piece of wood, piece of wood, piece of wood. Air. That's <laughs> inside to outside. That's nothing, right? That's, yeah. that's what's happening right there. That's where you're feeling your draft and the air is doing a, you know, little, yeah. you know, doing the twist and whatnot. So that's the good conspiracy theory there. We talk about with windows all the time because everyone wants you to prove ROI. So really the window manufacturers are just, they're, 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 they're liars when in the market right now. Yeah. Well, well, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sales thing, you know, window, window, window replacement is sales. And you know how to tell when a salesman's lying. It Trust me. Trust their lips, me. Their lips are moving. <laughs> Lloyd says, says the reason they're called replacement windows is they have to be replaced every 15 years. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That is just good. Tr- yeah. I mean, that's kind of, it is kind of, it's one of the sad things about the building industry is we have a lot of really cool gadgety crap that we put into our homes now, but it comes with these, you know, 15, 20, 25 year warranties. And, and I don't know, a lot of the houses were built with 100, 200, 300 year expectancy. And we shifted that to builder getting out of the, you know, their, whatever their, their warranty statute is, which is usually 20, you know, and they said, it's getting Construction to 20. defects is seven years, it's basically. The lawyers speak for everybody, every, every builders. You just need to get to 20 and then you're good. Right. Or the average you, American owns their house for eight years. So, you know, if you design it to last for 10, then it's somebody else's problem. Right. You didn't like it to begin with. You move after eight years. All these great houses, people don't move. So right. somebody said that uh, if your window can be operated with one hand, you don't need to replace it. <laughs> my, mine, are, to me. mine are 189, no, 190, 191 years old. And uh, I can still operate them with one hand, uh, but they also rattle in the wind. I have I have storms, but they are not equivalent to, to a modern double hung. But it's it's the, they've been repaired and repaired and repaired. So like a window can last two hundred years, but, but I'm not. Yeah, I mean, every, you give up some comfort. <laughs> a lot of things need replacement. At different, you know, mechanical systems yeah. need replacement. You know, there's, 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 it's certainly worthwhile. It'd be interesting yeah. to sort of design houses, you know, so anticipating replacing the windows every twenty or twenty five years, you know. Um, make, making it so that, that it was easy to replace them and keep the whole envelope uh, in, integrity in place. Yeah. My, Mike Gerton had a great comment recently that as he's working now, he's thinking more and more about that in his work and using things like counter flashings when he installs flashings so that when somebody inevitably has to replace that window, the head flashings and primary flashings can be slid out and new ones can be slid in a great idea. to tear the whole wall apart. Yeah, I like that. Makes it yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. If, if, you have, if, you have tr- if you have trim around the window, it's probably pretty easy to build something like that in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've actually been we've been working on this idea around a a frame system that allows you to you know using fiberglass or something that is a largely you know deterioration imp- impervious material create the opening and the flashing component that you need so that the sash parts could be replaced, right? Without having to ever interfere with any of the tapes or the flashings or the cladding systems. Cause the cladding systems that we're installing use, you know, they use cortex screws, which do not like to go out, <laughs> right? And if I've got a cladding that's designed to never be uninstalled into a metal trim that's designed to never be uninstalled. I need to have a window where I can just replace the operable portion of it without ever touching the yeah. frame. And you I can do that. You can do that with double hungs pretty easily, you know. With double hungs, and actually, I think a couple of casement manufacturers, without plugging a manufacturer, are are going that direction with their fiberglass systems, where 
you know, you can literally just unscrew a couple, you know, take out six screws and the, yeah. that part of it is, is easily if it, replaceable. Yeah. If the same manufacturer is still in business 20 years later, we're done, right? We're yeah. done. Oh, so, Emily says so we're out. We're out of so time. So to close this out, because I like to shut it down. Uh, what was So what did we most... win? Oh, yeah. What did we win? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, All three of nice. you can get. I will be happy to say get off my lawn on your voicemail if you want to arrange it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was going to say, what is the most obscure random local conspiracy theory that you guys both uh, had when you when you were putting together the slideshow to close this out? Local. I'm just... I, no, I thought, okay, you don't have one on. I hand. thought the Tartarian Empire was pretty cool, and you knew ah. about that one. That, that was a new one on me. That yeah. was insane. When yeah. I read that thing that Carl sent over, I, yeah. I, I was and, and I was I was pretty impressed with the Denver airport, mainly because they had they have a great sense of humor about it. The fact that they're totally they're totally embracing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was mostly just excited to take the piss out of Passive House and poke the <laughs> OSB study. And, and that is so we are so surprised about that, Michael. <laughs> Can't, can't believe it can't believe it yeah. we had no idea you'd say that <laughs> it's, it's actually oh, really no. funny it's it's summer camp one year michael's sitting there talking to this you know he, michael has been trashing passive as he was he's sitting there having this chat with this woman and after they finished talking i said michael you know that was cat klingenberg from passive house you were talking to <laughs> <laughs> and they've actually they're actually pretty good friends i was gonna say cat and i are super great friends so <laughs> You know, but he didn't know he didn't know who he was talking to at the time. Yeah. But what the crazy part is, she agreed with me that all the things that I disliked about Passive House, she also disliked, and that's why whenever I trash Passive House, I am careful to use the jerk.